This is the BBC. This podcast is supported by advertising outside the UK. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Hello, I'm Sheila Dillon. Every year, we host the BBC Food and Farming Awards here on the programme, shining a light on the people who are changing and improving the UK through food. Every year, they show us what optimism is. And right now, I'd say we need that more than ever. So have a listen. This is part one, the first course. We'll post the second course next week. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you, Sheila. See you. Thank you. All See you soon. Bye-bye. This is rather, um, rather grand. The ICC Wales International Conference Centre. The idea of building this in the grounds of the old Celtic Manor Hotel probably came from the NATO summit in 2014 when we saw on our TV sets President Obama and the others walking in the gardens here. The site of NATO summits and now the BBC Food and Farming Awards. Oh my goodness me, look at this. We're in this massive reception area. And there is BBC Food and Farming Awards illustration, 25 feet high, welcoming us. What a setting for the awards. Really exciting, really energising to see and hopefully hear from all of these individuals and organisations making big change in food, which is what's so important. It gives us a chance to highlight good practice, highlight opportunities for improving the world and doing a better job of whatever we happen to be doing. That bit of recognition does give everybody something to aspire to. And, you know, it really feels like we're at the Oscars of the food world. I can remember one of the most exciting things was just mingling with all of these food industry professionals that we've been following for years. I'm absolutely buzzing. This is... it's the best. I'm backstage now with Tommy Myers, who's our head judge this year and better known for the restaurant chain that she founded and runs, Oaxaca. Tommy... We're in a huge venue this year, but you know the pressures we've been under this year. These awards are, you know, they run on a shoestring. What did you make of what we were faced with, really? Having gone through the judging process and seeing the incredible work of these farmers, charities, champions of communities, for me, this is a spotlight on this incredible work that us in our cities, we take for granted the food is in the shops. This heroic job that these people do, not only in putting the food on our plates, but also in being that custodian of nature, trying to reverse back those terrible stories we hear about what we're doing to nature. And if you talk to politicians now, which I do, they know that food is extremely important to people. People are beginning to realise it's unjust, it's expensive and it's killing the environment. So more than ever is an amazing thing the BBC are doing. Thomasina Myers, our head judge. We walk into this auditorium in Wales, which this is only the second time we've been in Wales. You know, last year was in a beautiful building, the National Museum in Cardiff. And this is kind of the new Wales, entrepreneurial Wales. This is the Wales that is rebuilding its food system. And of course, I think back to when we began. And we began these awards to reward people who, through food, were changing Britain. But then it's allied to this kind of celebration, you know, this... You know, the huge screen, the films. It's amazing. I mean, it's 20-odd years afterwards, and it's still going. To officially welcome us to Wales and get the awards underway, please welcome the Senedd Minister for Rural Affairs and North Wales, Anne Trevnith, Leslie Griffith. Thank you very much. Good evening. It's a real pleasure for our country to host such an impressive array of people passionate about great food and drink. The awards have a long prestigious history and this audience of national and international guests and participating businesses is testimony to their recognition and to the pride people take in winning and also in taking part. But everyone who is here today has already worked hard, made their mark and shown exactly what they are capable of. And of course, especially in the best food and drink producer in Wales category. Diolch yn iawn. Time to start the awards. Well, good evening and welcome. Carissa, we are in the International Conference Centre, ICC in Newport, 
We're delighted that Food and Drink Wales are supporting this event again this year. Our first prize of the evening is for best food producer. Our three finalists exemplify, I think, what this award is all about. Great local produce that's creating local jobs and reducing food's carbon footprint. So let's take a look at this year's nominees. Hi, I'm Christopher Thomason. I'm the owner and manager of CNA Thomason, the mussel farm in the Shetland Islands. We're one of the last uh, independent mussel farms in Shetland. We sell all our own product through our own markets. We're a small business and we really don't need supermarkets. They grow a, a mussel much quicker. I like to think that if I leave my mussel in the water another year, each one of them reaches their full potential. A customer gets a, a ball of our mussels in a restaurant, they see they're getting something worthwhile and we know the provenance of it. Uh, the, the customers we have that stuck with us all this time appreciate the product and we, we, we have confidence now in the product, we can continue to do this. Hi, my name's Josh Benson. I manage the blueberry fields here at Brothers Farm. My name's Dan Benson, Josh is my brother. We open our doors to the public to come and do a bit of pick your own. We supply wholesalers from London to Manchester to Bristol, as well as doing sales from the farm gate. This kind of scale of business could exist on the outskirts of many towns. It provides jobs and it uses the land really well. <laughs> Judging alongside me is Thomasina Myers. Such amazing finalists and it was such a tough decision for us judges to choose between them. A very delicious uh, decision too. <laughs> But the winner of the Best Food Producer 2023 is Cousin Cymru. Yes! Where is Carrie? Cousin Cymru is a sheep's milk dairy run by Carrie Rhymes near Bangor. She makes remarkable unpasteurised used milk cheese and yoghurt. The milk is from a rare breed, Hlin sheep, reared by three local farmers who, up to the time that Carrie came calling, had just farmed them for their meat. Goodness, this, this, I have to say, this is a bit surreal, really, here tonight. And can I, can I just say a really big shout-out for all of those who nominated us? First of all, the cheese is unbelievably delicious. But then this idea of having a food that doesn't have to be sent out to big cities that could just be from local milk in quite marginal land that can actually be used to produce very good quality food to feed local people. There's something so pure and very important about that. The business model is that we send them all to London and we sell them at really high prices. But I've had a bit of experience in France where it can be shown that you can sell your product locally at a reasonable price. Now, it could still be a little bit of a pipe dream, but we are really trying hard you know, to see how far we can go along those lines. I was struck by the fact that this is being made by a woman who changed her career in her 50s, went off as a woofer, a volunteer on organic farms in France, learned how to make great cheese. But then when she came back, she saw that one particular traditional breed near where she was on the Hlin Peninsula had in the past been used for milk. And most used milk producers buy in their sheep from France. She knew that, in fact, they were already there. So she works with three farmers who had been producing sheep just for meat. And the meat market, you know, goes up and down. Well, they now have a secondary income, which comes from their milk. It's fantastic. And when you taste the cheese and the yogurt... That yoghurt is maybe the best yoghurt I have ever, ever tasted. And these are sheep that are living, as, as Tommy said, on marginal land. But what we so deprecatingly call marginal land here is often, in other countries like France, seen as the land that is rich in herbs and mixed grasses that gives real taste. This was not in the projected life story of Carrie Rhymes, I tell you. I mean, I'm the one who's totally astonished, you know, to be here tonight. So. Congratulations. It was marvellous. The next award of the evening is for the BBC Cymru Wales Best Food and Drink Producer. Becca Lynn Perkis was judging this one. Here are her finalists. Hi, I'm Lucy George from Peterton Tea, just outside Cardiff. We're growing tea organically 
and we're also making premium kombucha. We started 2014, I think I bought about 380 odd seeds, planted them out and they died. Rather than giving up, I bought 20,000 and establishing that they really needed to be in the nursery for 18 months to two years. A year's fine if you're near the equator, but in Wales it's not so fine. The fact that it's just Lucy and this tea has been grown here from seed with a lot of hard work and you can tell that she absolutely loves what she does. I'm Steve Lewis. We run Pembrokeshire Lamb, which supplies lamb, hogget and mutton meat boxes throughout the UK. I'm Cara. I'm the other half of Pembrokeshire Lamb. I'd love to say everything's about flavour, but you've also got to think about what goes into producing that flavour. I was born and bred on a sheep farm, but I actually did a degree in animal behaviour and welfare. They obviously work together and they're bouncing these ideas off each other and it's very exciting to see where the business will be going from here. I'm Andy Mounsey. And I'm Fiona Mounsey. And we're here at Belfry Vineyard in Pembrokeshire. We're producing Welsh sparkling and still wines. We try to keep things as minimal intervention as we possibly can whilst keeping the vines as healthy as can be. We use products like tea stain of nettle and um, willow and comfrey and dandelion, for example, to keep the plants uh, disease-free. I think what's really apparent from having met them They're all just shocked at how this has all come about. They're accidental winemakers. You know, the vineyard wasn't something that they thought they'd been wanting to do for years. But also the quality of the wines that they're able to produce, absolutely delicious. Becoming one of the finalists in the awards. I mean, it's like, this is crazy. We would never have imagined this happening. But it is, it's just, it's, it's quite surreal. I can reveal that the winner of the BBC Wales Cymru Best Food and Drink Producer for 2023 is Peterston Tea. I do my oh, hair. I'm shocked by that one. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll borrow from uh, Felfi Vineyard on that one that it's it, a bit surreal for sure. Yeah. <laughs> on stage with Becca Lynn Perkins is BBC Wales presenter Benaz Akar. Yeah, and Lucy, your family have had this farm up for a while. You've used it for lots of different things like fruit picking. And then you decide to make tea, and here you are, a winner. I mean, what your family think of that? Well, I think we're all still wondering if it is a good idea at the moment. So, yeah, this, this helps. I guess it's a, become a complete passion to produce good quality tea and, yeah, try and do something a little bit different. And also now to try and encourage other producers to take on tea and to diversify. I really do believe it's a product that can add niche, high value worth to small farms, basically. And a huge congratulations. Now the time for the chopping board moment. Something amazing. Looking forward to. Congratulations, Lucy George from Peterson Tea near Cardiff. And about those chopping boards, they are what we've given our winners over the years. They're handcrafted and engraved for each winner. Well, <laughs> Tommy, we've we've come really backstage. I mean, this is just right next to the stage. And here are the chopping boards. They're very handsome, aren't they? They are stunning. I'm loving the grain in them. Obviously, my father is a cabinet maker. He built my kitchen, so I love wood. But also, look at this engraving. It's very smart. Even these words, BBC Food and Farm Awards 2023 winner. Winner. How good is that? All these boards are made by a husband and wife team, Kelvin and Alison Beckett, at the Acorn Workshop in West Sussex. And... Here's Alison telling us about what it's like being involved with the awards. We got involved with the Food and Farming Awards more than 10 years ago. We used to, as a part of our business, make chopping boards for anniversaries and wedding presents and that, that kind of thing. Um, and so the BBC got in touch with us and it's been a, a long and happy relationship ever since then. We don't make them for anybody else now. They're made from solid oak. They're actually quite heavy when you pick them up. And we just sand them all off. And then the BBC give us the names of the winners. And the week before the competition, we engrave those, sand it all off again, oil it, wrap it all up, and they get there in time for the ceremony. There's always a a few nerve-wracking moments. We have to make sure, obviously, that everything is spelt right. Apparently, one year, one got stolen in the BBC office. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, and so we quickly had to make another one and, and get overnight delivery, so they had, had it there in time. 
if you're putting it on the shelf, that's great. Just maybe a damp cloth over it once a year to get rid of the dust. Otherwise, if you are going to continue using it, maybe give it a fresh coat of oil for every five or six years with a, a nice quality olive oil. They're so hard wearing. I don't think in a whole lifetime of you should be able to, to wear it out. When you get a prize like a chopping board and you have a street food stall, for example, you know, the tendency is that you start chopping on it. <laughs> <laughs> we'd literally come straight from Bristol when we'd won and we took our chopping board to show everybody, you know, on the street for stall. I remember I did, as soon as I said, I put the chopping board down. Next thing you know, there's pulled pork getting chopped on it. So, um, and also, you know, oh, we got it engraved. We had our logo engraved. We were just so proud of it. So we call it the life-changing chopping board. Chefs Sam Evans and Shauna Gwynn fire cooking stars and food and farming award winners in 2015, who've gone on to write books, make TV series, and now are back on our judging team. I'm going to say something quickly that's unscripted. <laughs> now I'm feeling scared. I, I just think all the nominees in our category were just amazing. What you're doing is so... Important. There were three finalists in the Farming for the Future Award, judged this year by Farming Today's Charlotte Smith and Lucy Speed, who plays Stella in The Archers. The winners on the night, the Green Farm Collective, a group bringing together farmers across England who work their land in a regenerative way, growing cover crops, reducing the need for cultivation and using fewer artificial fertilizers, insecticides and fungicides, an altogether greener way of doing things. And the group supports their members to find new sources of revenue to reward them for farming in this way. Oh, congratulations, guys. I have to say, I walked past them earlier because I have never seen any of them in a suit before in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, we're a bit staggered because um, we didn't expect to be stood up here, so absolutely flattered. I think it just shows the recognition we're getting for the work we're doing, and it's up to everybody on this planet to take responsibility for the food we eat and, and make the decision to eat food that is regeneratively produced where we are helping this wonderful planet heal and repairing the damage that we've done and taking it forward and healing our bodies along that way. And that's just a big thank you for giving us this award because it's just brilliant to be recognised for the work we're doing. It's a fantastic recognition of what we're trying to do to try and build a collective, to build support for regenerative agriculture in this country. I think it's also about giving farmers a bit more control about carbon, about biodiversity and about adding value to the food that they grow and that's a really big consideration for us. So healthy food, healthy planet, we've all got to take part and take responsibility for that. Members of the Green Farm Collective, winners of this year's Farming for the Future Award. Our next category is Digital Creator, a new award this year. It's been judged by my Radio 4 food programme colleague, Leila Kazim. She was joined on stage by a Buckinghamshire farmer who became very well known after spending 56 days in a South African villa. It's farmer Will Young from Love Island, which means he now knows a thing or two about social media. We dibble dabble in it, we dibble dabble in it. So I was on TikTok and Instagram before going onto Love Island, just posting videos of what I do on the farm and just bringing the connection between non-farmers and farmers and, you know, letting people know what actually happens on the farm. So in this category, we were really looking for people who were making us think a little bit differently and look at our food systems and the way that we make our decisions with more thought. So let's take a look at the finalists. Yeah, let's have a look. Hello, my name is Kenji Morimoto and my Instagram, Kenji, focuses on everyday fermentation, preserving and pickling. I want to debunk kind of the myth that fermentation should be really hard. The videos that have done well are very simple things where, you know, it's how do you make sauerkraut, right? And, you know, what are the main principles that anyone at home can follow to ensure they're doing it correctly, but also safely? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, to be honest. On paper, things in a state of slow decay doesn't sound that appealing, but he makes the topic of fermentation exciting. Hey, I'm Becky XL. I'm a multi Sunday Times best-selling cookbook author. I create lots of gluten-free recipes on my social media channels where I connect with my community. So often, if you're gluten-free, you're made to feel like the sort of odd one. What my social media has done, it's made people feel like they've got someone. She's filling a gap. There aren't 
huge places to go for support. And what I think is happening is people are recommending Becky and her channels. My name is Ben Reebuck. I run an account called Ben's Vegan Kitchen and it does exactly what it says on the tin. I lived in Israel for, for three years. So a lot of the food that I make is inspired by the food that I've eaten in the Middle East. And it is who I am. And I talk about it in a way that it, it's my experiences. What I really like is he's not preachy about it. You know, some people in that category on social media can feel like they're trying to convert you, but he just wants to feed you. It's actually the first award that I've ever been nominated for. I think the fact that there was at least one person out there to say, I really like what he does, I think he deserves to win something, kind of proof that I'm moving in the right direction. The winner of this year's Digital Creator category is... Becky XL. Woo! I have I have no words. <laughs> Honestly, this is this is the craziest thing in the world and it's not just an award for me. What I find most frustrating being gluten-free is that you you can kind of miss out not on just the food but on the social situations as well. You can feel like you're left out, you can feel like you're lonely and I kind of just want to push forward and champion people um, and make sure that everyone, you know, no one misses out, really. I think it's so, so important, and it's really, really incredible seeing, you know, all of the finalists making such a difference and such an impact on the world, and it's really, you know, being a young farmer myself, so incredible to see. I think as a content creator, so you get feedback from your audience, that's really nice, but beyond the kind of world of social media, you don't know if anyone actually looks at your work and think this is good. And so I think that the fact that we, the BBC Food and Farming Awards, are recognising that is kind of awesome. It's, it's crazy. Like, to me, I just feel like I'm just this girl who does recipes at home, but it goes so much further than that. It goes around the world. I speak to people from, you know, down the road to people in New Zealand. I speak everywhere, and, it, and it's an amazing sort of thing to, to get. So, yeah, crazy. How are you going to celebrate this award? I mean, you would tell me that I should probably take a holiday because when you came round... I was explaining how, like, literally, I am on my social media helping people answering questions from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. every night, seven days a week. I just, I do that. It's not for money, it's not for anything, it's because I really, really, really care about these people. So probably I should be taking a holiday, but most likely I'm going to go back to my hotel room and answer some more questions. So <laughs> that's just me. Uh, Becky, so well deserved, honestly. Congratulations Thank again. Thank you. Becky XL, BBC Food and Farming Awards Digital Creator of 2023. Now for an award that's sometimes known, at least in the food programme office, as Jager's Odyssey. In the industry, it's the one to win. In judging this award, Jager Wise, one of the food programme presenters and a full-time craft beer brewer, sips her way through some of the best drinks being made in the UK. Being pregnant, she was pleased this year that they weren't all alcoholic. Now, I'm very lucky. I really love to judge this category, and I've had a brilliant time travelling up and down the country, meeting the finalists and getting to try some of the wonderful drinks that they produce. They are a dynamic bunch, living proof that the British drinks industry is more exciting and diverse than ever. I'm Harry Tewksbury, I'm the head brewer at Old Tree Brewery. I'm Ty Ray Jones, I'm the managing director. Thomas Daniel, founder. Would you like to try the computer Yes, now? please, yes. yes. This, is, this is sort of the unflavoured, central on new added stuff kind of. It's very apple it's very mm. yeah. So you use it as a base for your other flavours? Exactly. Okay, great. You're, you're doing some distilling, you've got the composting going on, you've got the, uh, the fermentations, etc. The, and these are all quite complicated processes. The struggles of running a small business with this live, unpredictable product, it can be difficult. And getting the nomination like this to say, we've done something good here, we've done something important, we're doing something that people appreciate, is a massive boost for us. We are in McNeon Distillery in northwest Scotland. They put the environment at the forefront of what they're doing. I'm Amy and I am the visitor manager at Nignean, but I also do our sustainability work. Our namesake is a goddess in Gaelic mythology whose name is Nishniu and she was the protector of nature and the keeper of spirits. We're trying to respect nature whilst making whiskey. We're also not afraid to do things in a slightly untraditional way or look for new ways of doing things in whiskey that are going to have a positive impact for the future. Well, that's very good, isn't it? Very kind of light and spritzy. How did you guys feel when you found out you were finalists in the BBC Food Awards? It's pretty epic. It's lovely. It's, it's nice to be recognised. 
Hello, I'm Xavier Baker, co-founder of the Isle of Wight Distillery, home of Mermaid Gin. Uh, here on the Isle of Wight, we produce a range of spirits under the Mermaid range. And as a company, we try and be as mindful as we can towards the environment and the people we work with. How rooted in the Isle of Wight are your botanicals? We try and source as close to home as, as possible. So rock samphire, that's fine forage out on the south coast. Let's go for the zest. Lemons and bergamots and the rosemary with the zest work, works really well. Mm. That smells so absolutely phenomenal. Fruity, zesty notes in there. It's, it's I love the smell of bergamot. Yeah, when you found out that you were a finalist, how did you feel? I, over the moon. Caught me by surprise completely and it, yeah, it gives me goosebumps now and a bit of a, a, a tear to the eye. It's such a renowned award to be acknowledged and put forward really. They're all totally brilliant businesses doing things in their own unique way. I'm really excited to announce that the winner of the Best Drinks Producer 2023 is the Isle of Wight Distillery. Ah, oh, thank you. This is incredible. Absolutely amazing. It's just a really nice acknowledgement to the hard work and passion that all the team have put in. We've got 30 of us now, which is very serious and growing up. Thank you to everybody for voting and um, our fellow finalists as well. I think we do some trades afterwards, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zav, just a massive well done. Congratulations. The Isle of Wight Distillery, everyone. Please give them a round of applause. The drinks were, first and foremost, absolutely excellent. There was a wide variety of drinks. So it wasn't just excellence at one level. It was an excellence across a number of different drinks. And also, they're doing so much work within their local community. They do a lot of work within the environment, plus their team. It was so exciting. It was quite infectious. You could see the nervous energy in the whole team when we were there. And you could feel just how, how excited everyone was. And, I mean, I'm certainly proud to be able to be a part of it and, and to help give them this award. I mean, they really deserve it. It's incredible to have such a, a renowned, prestigious award. Yeah, it's a proper grown-up award. So, yeah, we're absolutely thrilled. I can't wait to in a minute tell the guys back home. I know they're all like, wait and let us know straight away what happens. The Isle of Wight Distillery, the winners of the BBC Food and Farming Award Best Drinks Producer. Huge congratulations to all our winners and finalists. What an evening it was. But this was just your first course. Next week, we have our second serving of winners, including this year's best street food, takeaway or small eatery with Sam and Shauna. Are you having a good time? Come on, give me your best. Yeehaw! The inspiring winner of Morning Lives 2023 Community Food Champion Award. You know, every year I do this, I think, OK, that's it, we've done it. We know what a community food champion looks like. And then every year I'm pleasantly surprised. And the winner of this year's Derek Cooper Award, named after the first presenter of this programme, awarded to recognise those whose work has widely influenced our understanding of the importance of food. And we hope, through our celebration of these incredible food producers, farmers, cooks, entrepreneurs and chefs, we continue Derek's legacy. Hi, I'm Kiri Pritchard-McLean. I'm the host of Best Medicine from BBC Radio 4, a comedy show that celebrates medicine's inspiring past, present and future. The cytosponge is a capsule on a thread. I'm saying a pill on a string. Have you invented being a drugs mule? <laughs> <laughs> A load of top comedians, doctors, scientists and inventors try to convince me what's the best medicine every episode by showcasing anything from micro-robotic surgery, Victorian clockwork surgical sores, world-first life-saving heart operations and more than a few ingenious cures for cancer. So you're sort of aiming to cure cancer by mixing, like, olive oil and washing up the liquids. <laughs> I feel like you must be due a Blue Peter badge by now. <laughs> You'll laugh. You'll learn it will restore your faith in humanity. You might even live longer. Best Medicine. Listen and subscribe on BBC Sounds.